Okay, so I know I had to hold this meeting a little bit earlier this morning so that a few of you probably won't be here. So what I'm going to do is, because some of the concepts I'm going to cover this morning um, are really looking to improve the grading of your summative piece you've got together, I'm going to record this. I'm currently working on my laptop as well, so I'm going to record the screen for that. Then I'm going to put them together and put it up on YouTube so that you can see this afterwards because some of it will make more sense. Um, I'm going to run through some things, so if you're just joining now, that's fine. Um, like I just said, um, this is all going to be recorded. I'm going to put it up for you afterwards as I go through. So, today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be suggesting three different techniques that you can use to try and improve your double exposure because this is a summative piece. It's one that you want to do well in. Okay, So, um, I've got my double exposure piece open in front of me, the one that I worked on before, and that's going to be what I use when I'm talking through this. And when I put the video up afterwards, that's going to be what you see when, um, while I'm editing with this. So hopefully it will make a bit more sense then. So, the three things that we're going to look at this morning um, are hue and saturation adjustment, levels adjustment, and uh, saturation, in case I didn't cover that, but I think I did originally cover that. So, with my version open, the first thing I'm gonna look at using is hue and saturation. Now, to access the hue and saturation adjustments, you have to look at the, the tabs at the top where it says like file, edit, image, and you want to go to the one that says adjustment, and you go to hue and saturation. Now, if you have yours open now, you're welcome to go through and have a look at it as you go. Otherwise, like I said, you can just watch this back afterwards. Now, hue and saturation allow you to adjust a few things. Um, they will allow you to change the colors of whatever layer you have selected. It will allow you to adjust how bright those colors are, how vibrant the colors are. So if it's really, really, um, if we say it's oversaturated, normally that means the color's really, really bright, it's really vibrant. Um, some of you who have looked at desaturating images, which are the other side of that scale, um, know already that means to remove or to pull all the colors out of that. So, one of the important things with using some of these adjustment tools is you need to make sure that you have the correct layer uh, selected. So. Like I said, um, when you see this afterwards, the layer that I have selected for adjusting the color is my um, landscape layer. So I've got my landscape layer selected. If I go to adjustment, hue and saturation, I can see the effect and you will see the effect when I put this video up and you can see mine as well, that by adjusting the hues, I can take what is a very normal or maybe quite dark um, forest piece, the one that's covering the double exposure of my face, and it becomes really, either really, really bright and blue, or I can change it to be more of a pink or a purpley color, or more of like an autumnal color, if it's like red and yellows, which can add a really interesting aspect to some of your work. And again, so I can play with hue a little bit, so H-U-E, and I can go to saturation, and by oversaturating or increasing that bar to the right hand side, it makes the colors that much more brighter to see, okay? so. If I zoom out on mine a little bit now, I can see I've got this really bright red forest that's running through the double exposure on my face, okay? So that's the first thing that you can look at. So hue and saturation adjustment, that's a way that you could take a really good double exposure that's currently set on like a grade five, um, a grade four, five, or six, and make sure you're kind of pushing it up higher by playing around with the colors a little bit and seeing what works best. The second thing that you can look at um, and th for this one, you can have either layer selected. You can have the landscape layer selected or the portrait layer selected. Um, is what's known as the levels tool. Now, a levels tool is under adjustment. So if you go to the adjustment tab and go down to levels, what you will be presented with when you click on this, <coughs> excuse me, is a graph and under the graph there are three boxes. There's one with a black color, one with a gray color, and one with a white color. Now by adjusting these or by clicking on them and moving them around, it increases or decreases the amount of either dark tones, mid tones, or light tones that there are in the image. So say for example, um, the box on my far right when I select levels is the, the light tones, the white tones. If I click on that box 
and I drag it over towards the, the left hand side of the graph, it adds a lot more lighter tones into the image and it accentuates them, makes them really, really bright and um, easier to see, okay? Which has a flip side of me now not being able to see my uh, landscape layer that well. So what I might want to do instead of that is if I click on the black or the gray box and I drag those down slightly, it might make the features of the portrait layer darker and more um, easy to see, but I'm still able to see some of that landscape, okay? So um, you're welcome as well, you can do that um, on the landscape layer also, you can go to levels and you can adjust those different bars to see how it comes, how it comes out and how it changes and the effects that it has, because part of this is about learning to experiment with digital manipulation as well. Digital manipulation, if you do art next year as part of your diploma, if that's something that you're considering, digital manipulation, digital work, digital art, photography, all of that is part of what you can submit as part of your portfolio of work that you put together. Because for those of you who maybe don't know, when you get to diploma next year, you have a lot more freedom with the materials that you can use. Um, okay, so that was two, that was hue and saturation, that was levels. The last one that I'm gonna suggest to you today, and this is gonna be much more on a case-by-case -case basis, um, is, what is the invert setting, okay? So with the landscape layer selected, if I go to adjustments and scroll down to invert and press invert, what it's gonna do is it's going to invert the colors that are already there. So um, it's going to take my nice red forest that I had, it's gonna make a really dark, um, also I did a really blue shade. Um, so what I can do with that is I can invert the colors and I can see how it looks when I move my landscape layer around. Maybe it presents a bit more of an interesting or abstract effect. Now, the reason I said this one will be more on a case-by-case -case basis is because it will not always look good. Like I'm looking at mine that I have inverted now and I know myself that I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this doesn't look good. This, this isn't a, a good effect for what I'm putting together. However, on your landscape layer, it may be that actually this does work quite well. And yeah, I like the way that that's come together. And that might be something which is more at your discretion whether it has worked or whether it has not. Um, so I'm gonna keep it relatively simple with just those three. And like I said, um, I am going to, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the audio feed from a meeting. I'm gonna take the video that I've edited as I've gone through that with uh, my portrait as I've gone through my double exposure. And I'm gonna share this up on the team space. So you're welcome to have a look and see as I'm talking about it, what adjustments those make. Um, what I would suggest to you is to maybe try and see if you can incorporate any of the settings that I've discussed today into your own double exposure to try and see if you can make any improvements based upon that. And then if you have any issues after watching what I put out, please send me a message and then I can help you go through it.